Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm checking out the Nitec XD65 Pro 2 Thermal Monocular. So this is it uh, in the box guys, so let's open it up and show you what it comes with. Okay, so we've got the device itself, which we'll have a closer look at in a moment. We've got a uh, manual here. We've got a Nitec uh, sticker. We've got a uh, video out cable, a USB cable, and a carry case. Okay, so when you pick the device up, it's just got this rubber coating, um, and it feels really comfortable in the hand. Now, the dimensions of it, we're roughly about uh, 20 centimeters long by 6.5 centimeters wide, 6.5 centimeters uh, tall at the tallest part here. So it doesn't weigh a lot, uh, 500 grams, so you know easily you can have this up to your eye the entire night. It's certainly not gonna weigh you down. Now, um, a lot of people would ask, you know, why wouldn't you just get a uh, thermal scope? Well, you know, when I had the Pulsar thermal uh, scope, for example, you know, fantastic, great quality, but the thing is you've got to put that rifle up to your shoulder every time you want to look around. And obviously, you know, that starts to weigh you down after a couple of hours of doing it. This is very versatile having a monocular. Uh, you can just simply look around, it's easy to maneuver, and it's not going to weigh you down as if it was a uh, thermal scope on a rifle. Now we've got a uh, 50 mil objective here, and there's a um, four power uh, digital zoom basically or e-zoom I think they call it for memory so you can um, change the zoom with the uh, magnification button on top there you just hit it once and it'll go to two power hit it again and it'll go to four power and then hit it again it'll just go back to standard okay the buttons on the top here we've got a uh, camera button at the back here if you hit that just once it'll take a photo uh, because it can uh, record onto its internal 16 gig uh, memory if you want to do video, um, it'll do high definition video. You just got to hold it down uh, for a few seconds and you'll see in the uh, viewfinder here, uh, it'll come up and start recording. At the front here, we've got the uh, on off switch. Um, when it's on, if you want to save battery life, just hit it quickly once and it'll go into standby. Hold it down for about three seconds and it'll turn off. Now, uh, that brings me to the actual battery life on it. Um, they say up to six hours of battery life, okay? Um, look, I've used this for a few nights now, and yeah, quite a few hours I have used it. Haven't had any issues at all with the battery running out. You can see it in the little uh, viewfinder, what the battery uh, status is at all times. Now, I've also got Wi-Fi, so you can stream this to like a tablet or uh, you know to your phone. Now, I've got a um, iPhone, and there's a uh, third party app that they advertise, you know, to get. I've had a look at it and, um, you know, it works with taking video and photo across. Uh, what I'll actually um, show you, uh, let's do it now actually, guys. I'll show you a clip here of the motion difference. Now, when you're recording through this actual device um, and you actually take the files from the device to your computer directly, Everything seems normal motion, but what I've found with the app for the iPhone is um, it seems to record in almost like a slow motion here. So we look at Hank and he's moving about, uh, you know, fine. And then you look at the other clip and it's almost like slow motion. And that's the one that's been taken across uh, to the app, to my phone, and then to the computer. Very, very strange. Uh, I'm not too sure why that is, but um, yeah, I found if you just download directly from the device itself, it'll be, you know, a lot, lot clearer. Now, uh, it's got a 640 microbolometer sensor resolution, okay? So this is the top of the range one from Night Tech. So think of like, you know, 320 DPI uh, as opposed to like 640 DPI. Obviously 640 is gonna be a lot better uh, clarity and it's the same with the sensor resolution. 640 really is where I personally would like to uh, enter the market with thermals. I've had a look at a few of the 320s now, and yeah, I just want something that's just that little bit better. Now the pixel pitch on this is 12 micrometers. Um, so I did explain this in the Pulsar review. I'll explain it again, guys. Basically uh, one micrometer is a thousandth of a uh, millimeter. Okay, so to give you an idea, uh, 50 uh, micrometers is roughly a human hair. So, you know, 
this is 12 micrometers so that's measuring the distance from the center of a pixel to the next pixel okay so very very fine obviously why you get decent quality there now we've got uh, five different uh, color palettes and we'll show you that when we get out on the farm the detection range on this for a person is an impressive 2600 meters um, and for deer size objects uh, 3500 meters We've also got a uh, laser as well that you can activate there. And there are a couple of different reticles. Now, I'm not too sure why they would even have that. To me, look straight off the bat, guys, that's pointless um, when you're not able to actually mount this uh, and use it as a scope because it's not recall rated or anything. Okay, so uh, what else can I tell you about it? Um, where it's made, I have no idea, guys. On the box, everywhere I've looked with this, um, it doesn't have where it's made. Um, I'm guessing possibly China. Um, you know, if any of you guys know, feel free to uh, comment below the video. Comes with a uh, three-year warranty, and um, the retail price here in Australia is four and a half thousand dollars. So look, not ultra cheap. So I'm expecting a fair bit um, from the device. But let's get out on the farm now and uh, show you a few different um, clips and uh, show you what this device is actually capable of. Okay, so we don't have audio recording, so I'm gonna to have to voice over with this, guys, but we're looking at Hank here, and I'll show you the five different color palettes. This is the first one, now the second, and the third, now the fourth, and the fifth. So I like the first one I had it set on, so I'll just put that back. So now we're looking at a hare 60 yards away here in one of the paddocks, and you can clearly see that it is a hare. The heat signature and the detail is really quite clear. So yeah, not a problem whatsoever for this device at that short range. So now we'll stretch it out to 300 yards here on the most rockiest part of the farm. And I wanted to show you the difference between the heat signature coming off the rock and then the heat signature coming off the cattle at the top of the hill. So now we'll stretch it right out. So at the top of the hill here, we're three k's away from the cattle way up there. And obviously at the bottom, it's a bit closer, but as you can see, if we zoom in now to two power, um, you can clearly see them there. A little bit more pixelized. Now at four power, obviously a lot more pixelization. But if you keep an eye on the um, cattle at the bottom left of the screen there, you'll see movement clearly there. So you know that you're not looking at a rock or anything like that. And obviously the device is that good that it'll pick up a tiny mouse moving through the field as well. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up my final thoughts on the Nitec XD65 Pro 2 thermal monocular. Now, there's a couple of things that I don't like about the K, and I'll just talk about these briefly. They're not major things, but there are a few things that after a week of using this, I've found a little bit of a bugbear. Now, the first is just the uh, cover at the front here. I mean, it is just such flimsy rubber, and a couple of times that I've popped it on, it's actually popped out on me and I could see after time that would wear. Um, four and a half thousand dollar optic and there's this thin little piece at the front to protect, you know, a very valuable part of that optic. I just think it could be done a lot better. Uh, the other thing that um, I just find um, pretty much uh, useless is the laser. I don't really understand why you'd have the laser on a monocular, especially when you can't mount it on a firearm. Look, there may be some of you guys out there that uh, may like to use it to uh, look at different game, activate the laser so if you've got someone shooting with you, they can see where that laser is there on the game perhaps. Um, yeah, but, but even then, um, I just find it a little bit of a wasted feature for myself. Like I say, guys, you might find it useful, but I find it a wasted feature for my uh, needs. The other problem that I've had is compatibility problems. Um, the optic does not like Apple stuff, okay? So that goes for the app. You now, there's a third-party app for the iPhone. Um, problems there with the actual video recording being almost in slow-mo as opposed to just nice um you know fluid motion 
Also too, with it recognizing on a uh, Apple computer. Now, when you plug the USB in to the Apple, like um, my uh, Mac, um, starts charging it but won't recognize the device so to get the actual files off the device I've had to uh, plug it into a PC recognizes um, immediately so no issues there so guys look probably uh, you know the bugbears with it they're only minor in the scheme of things and let's be honest some software updates and stuff like that and I'm sure it'll fix the issues there with the Apple and look the front piece there yeah, I'm pretty sure that could be a uh, easy fix to something a little bit better quality. And the laser, well, for some like me, it's pointless. For others, you know, they may find it uh, very useful. Now, the likes of it. I tell you what, um, I love the weight of it. You know, I can just use this all night, hold it up to the eye. Doesn't weigh you down. Very, very comfortable with the, with the rubber there. Um, you know, waterproof, so you're not going to have any issues with using it out in the, um, the rain. The quality uh, of the sensor, fantastic. And to be quite honest, the distance of its uh, detection would far exceed what my needs really are, uh, to be quite honest. But I just like the high quality of the sensor there. Um, I like the image. Um, there's a lot of things I do like about it. So um, yeah, do I think it's worth the four and a half uh, thousand? Uh, well, personally, yes, because a lot of, um, you know, uh, I guess competitors with that same uh, sensor resolution are around about that same price. So you're going to be paying uh, you know, quite a few thousand dollars for a high quality thermal at the time of doing this review naturally. So yeah, overall guys, I'm fairly impressed with it. Um, it's certainly something that I find very useful because honestly, it doesn't matter whether it's a deer or cattle or a dog or, or you know, rabbits or even mice, you know, this thing picks it up. So the quality is definitely getting better with technology and the prices are coming down to what they were years ago. So uh, yeah, I think overall it's a pretty good um, monocular and uh, I find it very very handy all right guys we'll leave the review at that hope you enjoyed watching it so till next time we'll catch you then